With TrackRig, Loop Community set out to create an audio interface built for live performance that was very simple and easy to use. And I have to say, after a few months of trying out TrackRig, I believe they accomplished what they set out to do. In this video, I'm gonna give uh, some of my own biased, unfiltered thoughts on TrackRig. I have to let you know this is not a paid review. Uh, Loop Community did send me a track rig to uh, to use and try out, um, and I've really enjoyed it. And what I thought I'd do in this video is just give you a couple quick things that I like about it, a few things to consider and think about before you purchase. So let's dive in and let's get started. Now, first off, again, uh, I like understanding the worldview of products. When I get a software, when I get an audio interface, a MIDI controller, I try really hard to understand and put myself in the worldview, the place of uh, where the designers, the developers, the creators were when they created this product. And with TrackRig, Loop Community set out, again, to create an interface custom-built for live performance and an interface that had no control software. Now, I want to stress, I don't think control software is, is a bad thing. Control software enables... Um, a lot of really great extra features, the ability to pass through audio from one computer to the next, uh, redundancy, uh, built-in mixes that allow you to use the interface for uh, almost like a, a sound console. And pretty much every audio, audio interface you buy today has control software with it, from Focusrite to iConnectivity to really everything in between. But Loop Community kind of wanted to revolt against that, to say, hey, we just want you to, to have an audio interface you plug in and you use. Um, and I appreciate that they did that. Now, you lose some of those um, special features, extra features that you get with interfaces with control software. But if all you're looking for is a way to get audio out of your computer, um, then TrackRig is a fantastic solution. So let's talk about a couple things I really like. First off is just the size of the interface. So uh, I've got mine here and let's show you this over on the camera. Um, I've got the optional rack ears connected here and we'll talk about those in a second. Um, but I thought uh, when it comes to this, because I have tra uh, uh, rack ears on this and most of the images I've seen of this are uh, it racked up, I thought this would be a much bigger, heavier uh, interface that needs to be in a rack and needs to be cared for really easily. Easily. Um, but I, I love this. It's super lightweight. If you take the rack ears off, which again, those are an optional add on. We'll talk about those in a second. Um, this is a reasonably sized interface to throw in a backpack for a fly rig or something. So yes, it works really well with rack ears, throw it in a rack and there's some um, really great benefits of that. We'll talk about in a second, but it, it, it will work in just, you know, uh, again, not racking up and just throwing in your backpack. Uh, it's super lightweight, so it's not going to kill your back to, to have a, a fully rack mountable interface in your backpack, which is great. Uh, number two, I, I mentioned this before, uh, is these rack ears. And if you're unfamiliar with, with what this is, um, basically this is a, uh, you do have to purchase this. Let's see if I can turn this to where you can see it. Get a, a good kind of view of this. There we go. You can see the side. So here's the rack ears here. And the purpose of this is to allow you to rack this up. And what I mean by that when I'm saying that is put this interface in a rack of gear. And you've, you've probably seen people using um, a, a rack to protect gear. They have a power conditioner. They typically have an interface, uh, or maybe a, a, a set of direct boxes, rack mounted direct boxes. Um, Loop Community uh, tried to simplify that a little bit with the track rig, but you could put rack ears on this. Again, it's an optional additional purchase you have to put on um, that will allow you to rack it up. But here's what I really like about this. They really thought through the design of this because uh, I don't know how well you can tell this or not. Let's see if I can move my mic out of the way a little bit. Uh, I have a set of screws here and I have a set of screws here. So I can put the rack ears so that the XLR uh, outputs are on the front or I can put the rack ear so that the back side of this, we'll talk about what this is, um, is on the front. So I like that either side of this can be essentially the front of the interface. So based on how you have this set up, you can decide, do I want XLR cables hanging out of the front or the back of my rack, which is great. So um, the the ability to have these on either side is is really, really great. It makes this a flexible interface. Number three, um, obviously we talked about this and I showed this uh, earlier, but just XLR output. So the fact that um, these are just outputs that are XLR uh, that I can just plug a uh, cable into and go directly to my stage snake uh, makes it again, a great solution for live performance. Now a lot of interfaces now are balanced output so you could do like a quarter inch to eighth snake but what's great about this is you could throw this in your backpack and then go to the venue and if the venue is providing xlr cables you have everything you need which is great um, also these lights are great on front to kind of give you a visual image of uh, of gain and volume that you're outputting from these but um, this is super great the other thing i like about this is the usb hub on the back 
So let me get this where you can see. Um, here's, and I should show you, here's a connection to your computer USB host. You have an on off switch. Uh, there's your power for your power adapter. We'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, but you get these four ports uh, of a USB hub. Now this does no special processing, which is in some ways can maybe be a, a downside. There's some other interfaces that have USB hub stuff that do really special processing things on it. But what's nice about this is this is essentially just a four port USB hub. You could plug anything into here, a hard drive, MIDI controller, um, I guess another audio interface if you wanted. Uh, I'm trying to think what else. Uh, you could plug a phone in. That's something they demo often, like plug a, a USB cable to lightning in and charge your iPhone or Android or whatever you want to. Uh, but this USB hub is really, really helpful and beneficial, the fact this is here. Uh, and for me, this is a big thing because often in live performance or setting up or in rehearsal, um, you need to charge a phone or something and maybe all, maybe all your ports on your computer are used up. Um, this is really handy and helpful to have access to that, which is great. So uh, again, I, I like the track rig. I think what LC decided uh, was what they were attempting to do by creating the track rig. Again, an audio interface that's simple, an audio interface that doesn't have uh, control software that you just plug into your computer and it just works. Uh, they have done that. Here's a couple things to consider though. One, it's not bus powered. Bus powered would mean you plug in your USB cable here to your computer and you go. You do have a power adapter that comes with it. So a fairly large brick uh, and then like an IEC cable that you plug in. Uh, so you do have to use that, which is not uh, the end of the world, but you throw that in your backpack as well to you have your on off switch, which is, which is great. Um, and then the other thing to consider with the track rig, which um, you can see this as a pro or a con is there's no control software with it. So like I mentioned, um, uh, that's a pro from the perspective of loop community because you just plug it in and it works. I mean, that's a pro from anyone's perspective. You plug it in and it works, which is great. Right. But the downside of that is you, you don't have some of those extra features you would get with other interfaces that have control software. I just want to stress, that's a weird thing for me to say, because the goal of this interface is not to have control software. So I'm, I'm not making a value statement as to whether that's good or bad, but if you're buying an interface and you're going, you know, I hope I can pass audio to another computer. I hope it has redundancy built in. Uh, I hope uh, it does this or that. Um, without that control software, it doesn't do that. But if you're just looking for an interface that you plug into your computer and it works and you call it a day, and you get XLR outputs on it, uh, then the track rig is a great solution. Uh, now, I've put a link in the description if you want to purchase the track rig directly from Loop Community, you can head there and do that. But if you want to learn more about how to set this up and use it with your computer to use it with Prime or Playback on your Mac or on your iPhone or iPad, um, I've created a using track rig course that's available on from studio to stage. You can click the, uh, the link in the description of this video. I've actually got a couple different lessons there that are available for free as a preview to you if you want to check that out. And then if you like the course, you can subscribe and become a From Studio to Stage student. And when you do that, you get access to the track rig course, 24-7 on-demand access wherever you are, wherever you're watching. You can watch the using track rig course, uh, plus over 50 other courses. Again, on-demand, enroll at any time, watch it at any time, take a break, come back plus a bunch of other things, 200 credits every month to purchase things in the shop for free, uh, a monthly call that's exclusive just for students, uh, where you can ask me any question you have about Ableton Live, about track rig, about any of your gear, uh, as well as an exclusive community for students and so, so much more. So uh, click the link in the description of this video to check out the Using Track Rig course, become a From Studio to Stage student, um, and all your wildest dreams will come true. Uh, we have a bunch of fun over on the site and on the community. Uh, and if you like content like this, gear for performing on stage, learning how to use Ableton Live on stage, um, then make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel. Hit the subscribe button and then hit the bell icon because I post a brand new video every single day at 10 a.m. Central. I, I basically don't sleep. All I do is create content, but I create content to help you learn how to run tracks like a pro on stage with Ableton Live, learn how to use all your gear on stage. I've been saying recently, uh, if it's got a, a MIDI port on it, and can control Ableton Live or be controlled by Ableton Live, we will or already have a course on the site about that. And I'll likely create some tutorials here on the YouTube page. So make sure you subscribe to see that. Consider becoming a From Studio Stage student. And I hope you see you on the next video tomorrow at 10 a.m. Central, and if not that one, then the day after. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. Take care. Have a great week. Bye.